So I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube about this topic and they all focus on the specific techniques and skills that you can use in order to get kids to be quiet. Things like call and response. So I say, eyes on me, one, two, three, and the kids go, one, two, eyes on you or something like that. That kind of call and response, yeah, that can work to get the kids quiet, but I'm taking a different tack in this video. In this video, I'm going to be focusing more on the underlying issues around keeping a class quiet and what you can do to foster a environment or an environment in your classroom to ensure that when you want the kids to be quiet, they understand that and they will be quiet because they respect you. So it's less about gimmicks. It's less about specific tricks you can do to get the kids to pay attention. It's more the macro view of why kids are noisy and how to get them to be quiet. If that sounds good to you, tune on in. I've got four tips for you in this video. Hi there, teachers. If you're new to the channel, my name's Mark. I'm a high school math teacher. To everyone who's not new, welcome back to another video. The first thing I want to talk about today is that clear expectations are absolutely everything when it comes to getting kids to be quiet. Now, something I've learned in my years of teaching is that kids have this innate understanding and a strong passion about fairness. If you're not being fair, the kids will recognize that and they will tell you that. And curiously, it doesn't even matter if you are being fair, it's about whether they perceive what you're doing to be fair. So with that in mind, in terms of our expectations that we set for the students, it's really important when you're setting them that you let the kids weigh in on those expectations and you ask them, kids, is this a fair expectation or do you think I'm being unfair when I expect this from you? And honestly, most of the time the kids say, yeah, that seems reasonable, right? Like if you say at the start of the year to a new class of students, you say, look guys, one of my expectations is if I'm talking up the front and I'm doing some teaching, you all are silent. If another student is asking a question or I'm talking to another student about a question they just asked, you're silent. Okay, it's really important that you're silent so that other students can listen and they can learn and get value from the question that's being asked or the teaching that I'm delivering. And you say to the students, look, is that a fair thing for me to expect of you? No, I'm serious, guys. Like, if it's not fair, let me know. I'm happy to discuss it and change it if it's not if I'm not being fair. But what you find is the vast majority of the time, the kids go, yeah, that's fair. Like, that makes total sense. We're at a school. And... That's a really important thing to establish from the start. It's not okay for you to go into the classroom and say, listen, guys, rule number one, you're silent when I'm talking. Like the kids are just going to look at that and go, another one of these dictator teachers, I'm not going to listen to them. Now, the beautiful part of getting the kids to weigh in and agreeing that your expectation is fair is that when a student breaks your expectation, and they will, as we all know, when they break your expectation, you can say to them, hey, remember at the start of the year, at the start of the lesson, because you should be uh, outlining your expectations more than once. You say, remember when we discussed how when I'm talking, you're silent, it's for the good of the class. Remember that? And they'll say, yes. And if they don't, the other kids will remind them, I promise you. It's really important that you can reflect back or direct the student back and say, listen, we agreed that it's a fair expectation. By me pulling you up now and asking you to be quiet, it's a fair thing for me to be doing. And the kid's going to understand that. And usually I get, oh, sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's like it 100% of the time. I know I do a great student. Now, the last thing about setting clear expectations is that you need to set clear consequences as well, right? It's not good enough to just say, here's my expectation. Unless there's an actual consequence for breaking that expectation, the students will continuously step over that line. At the very least, they'll step over the line until you build enough respect with them. But I'm kind of imagining if you're watching this video, you've got a challenging class that you haven't built a great rapport with yet. So after the expectation that you've all agreed is fair, you set a fair and reasonable consequence for their actions, right? If a student's talking while you're talking, maybe you take one minute after, after class every single time they interrupt, or maybe you take five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever it is, maybe you give them three strikes. And if they break the three strikes, they give you 15 minutes after class or after school or whatever it is. You set up a fair and reasonable consequence. And when the students break your expectation, whether it's once or three times or whatever it is, once they break it, this is tip number two, you absolutely have to follow through. And that's probably the biggest mistake I see even experienced teachers make when it comes to getting a class quiet is that they don't follow through on their threats or their consequences. And the kids are going to test the line, right? If you set the expectation that every kid's silent while you're teaching, kids will test that boundary. Whether they mean to or not, whether it's conscious or subconscious, 
they're going to whisper to one another or they're going to talk to one another or they're going to call out or something like that. They're going to test the boundary and you have to follow through because if you don't, the kids are going to know that you're not going to follow through and they will continually press that boundary, right? If you've got a structure and system in your class to get the kids to be quiet and kids break that, they need to face a consequence so that everyone else can see that your expectations are serious and that if they don't meet them, they will face a consequence. After all, it's only fair. Now, speaking of fair, if you're enjoying my content overall, or at the very least this video, especially if it's your first one, I think it's only fair that you click the like button down below because it tells YouTube that my videos are great and it tells YouTube that you're getting value from them. So I feel like it's only fair that if you're enjoying it, only if you're enjoying it, don't click it just because, but if you are enjoying it, make sure you click that like button. Appreciate that. Now, tip number three is that you actually cannot settle for good enough. Right, if your expectation is that the kids are silent when you're teaching or the kids are silent when someone else is asking a question and there's a couple of kids whispering in the back, you cannot let that go, okay? If you let that go, I promise you, other students elsewhere in the classroom are going to hear the whisper or they're going to see the whisper and they're going to think to themselves, hmm, I don't think we actually have to be silent, now, they might not think it consciously, but at the very least, their subconscious mind's going, oh, well, old mate's talking. They're having a whisper. We can whisper. Okay, it's not silent. He wants quiet. But if you actually want silence, you can't let that go because what's going to happen is Betty and Jane in the back are going to see Tyler and Marco talking in the corner and go, oh, we can whisper as well. We'll just quickly whisper to each other. What are you doing on the weekend? Oh, I'm going to be. And then all of a sudden, you've got different people whispering all the time that you're trying to teach. And eventually, you're going to get annoyed, you're going to get frustrated, and you're going to call out a couple of kids who are whispering and say, Oi, my expectation is no talking while I'm talking. And you know what that's going to cause? That's going to cause that trigger in the student to go, that's not fair. There's that word again. They're going to go, that's not fair. Marco and Tyler were talking and Betty and Jane were talking. Why am I getting picked on? And suddenly you've got a confrontation with a student and it's actually your fault and the kid's not being unreasonable because you weren't fair. And so it's extremely important that you do not settle for good enough. You set your expectation and if the kids don't meet it, you call them out each and every time. It's the only way you're going to get what you want as a teacher because otherwise you're fighting a losing battle. And you're just going to create kids who feel like you're being unfair and put them more offside and you're going to lose their respect. Now, there's a common saying in teaching, don't smile until Easter or don't smile for two months or whatever it is. The implication being is you need to go hard at the start and then loosen up as the year progresses. And while I don't necessarily agree that that's good advice, in fact, I covered it in another video about terrible teaching advice, the premise of going in hard and setting an expectation of excellence early is so crucial. Now, I'm not saying don't smile. I smile all the time. I make jokes with my kids, but I set very clear expectations and I demand excellence and I call kids out when they're not being excellent. Alrighty, and before the fourth tip that I've got for keeping a quiet classroom, I want to know what your biggest challenge is when it comes to keeping a class quiet or getting them to go from noisy to quiet. Is it a specific type of student? Is it a specific age group or year level? I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So if you've got an idea of what you struggle with, make sure you comment it down below. Really looking forward to reading those comments. Now, my fourth tip is you've got to give kids an opportunity to talk if you want them to be silent. It's kind of paradoxical when you just hear it like that. You've got to let them talk to get them to be quiet. But think about it. If you've ever had to sit through an hour long staff meeting, without talking, without getting up, without moving, it's near impossible. At least for someone like me who loves the sound of their own voice, I need an opportunity to talk and interact. I can't sit there for an hour. Maybe you're not a teacher yet, maybe you're still at university, but just think back to all those hour or two hour long lectures. You have to sit there for that long without talking. Oh, it drives you insane. So how can we expect as adults who struggle with it, how can we expect teenagers to go an entire lesson without talking? It's not fair. It's not fair to have that expectation of them. So you have to build in opportunities for students to talk. Now that might look something like every 15 minutes, you give the kids one to two minutes to have a chat to one another. Maybe it's every halfway through the lesson, you give them five minutes to just unwind and talk and think. Maybe you wanna be a bit more structured and you'll play a brain break game where the kids can 
answer questions or they can debate something, whatever it is, you've got to give them the opportunity. Now, everything in this video is really good advice and stuff that I've learned over my years as being a teacher and stuff that I use every single day, but there's plenty of terrible advice out there. I talked about this earlier in the video, but especially for pre-service and training teachers, there's so much bad advice out there. You need to understand what is not good advice that is commonly given. I got a video on screen now where I go through all the bad, bad, bad advice given to pre-service teachers. If you're training to be a teacher or a beginning teacher, you have to watch this video because there's some really bad stuff out there. For those of you who aren't going to watch that video, there's another video on screen that I think you might like. Thanks for tuning into this one and I'll see you in the next video.